Hey, what's up everybody? I'd like to welcome you to another Juice tutorial. And in this tutorial, we're going to do something that has been in high demand for quite some time, which is building an oscillator using the Juice oscillator class in the DSP module. So before we get started, I just wanted to tell you about our audio programming community. So it's a place where people can come and ask each other questions and we have audio programmers of all different levels and uh, it's a great place to connect and uh, tell people about your audio programming woes and successes. So uh, you can join on the audioprogrammer.com forward slash community and that will give you access to our Discord group. So going back to the lesson, this will be the first part of a series that we're going to do where we're going to build a synthesizer uh, using Juice. And the first thing is, of course, generating sound. So we're what's better to generate sound than an oscillator. So let's go ahead and start a new project. So I have this new project here. We'll build a basic plugin and I will just call this basic oscillator. It will create the project. I will just put this in this folder. And now we have our source files and we need to add our DSP module to our set of modules here. So we will just go to add a module, loose juice, global juice modules path and make sure that our DSP module is there and we will open it up in Xcode. So now here we are in Xcode and what we will do is uh, to speed this process up a bit, I'm going to just build the plugin in standalone mode. So to do that, just go up to your targets up here at the very top where you have all of your different targets. You can build just for VST3 or AU and so on. We're just going to build for standalone. And now what I'm going to do is build that. Uh, it's very possible if you're just working off of your laptop, you may actually get an error here when you first build. Uh, to fix that error, the reason that it's happening is because uh, it's expecting inputs for the standalone mode here. So we see that uh, here on line 18, it has a stop with input and this is set to true. If we just change this to false, I'm gonna wait for it to compile here so it doesn't mess me up here. Um, if we just set this to false, this will fix any error, any build error that you have when you first try to do this. So we'll just do this again. And while that's, while that's doing its thing, we see we got build succeeded there. So we're fine. We've got our hello world here. So there's Blake project. And now we can just move to our plugin processor header file. And we can start creating our oscillator. So let's go to our documentation here and see what we need to do to get this started. So we see that we have this oscillator class. This could be a little bit tough to set up if you're first starting off. Uh, maybe tough isn't the word, just uh, challenging to figure out the right syntax, but just follow along and everything will be okay. So uh, we need to set it up as DSP oscillator and then it has this sample type. So we need to tell it what sort of samples that we're trying to process. In this case, we're trying to process floats. So we'll just put float in there. Going down a little bit further, we have two different constructors that we can declare for this. We're going to use the second one here and we see that we have this const std function numeric type uh, function. Now, what does that mean? This is actually where we're going to put our equation that's going to calculate uh, calculate our wave out. Okay, so that is where we're going to do that. Do that, and we're going to do it using a lambda function, uh, which is just a small function that we're putting in place that will actually calculate the values that we need for our wave. Okay, uh, we can also we also have this optional argument where we can use a lookup table. So lookup table is a way to actually make this uh, this oscillator more efficient. And I'm not gonna get too far into what that means, but let's just have a look really quick uh, while we're here and just take a look at the oscillator class. So if you go to into juice DSP, into widgets, I believe, and then into juice oscillator, we will see, once again, we see that this is a template class. So that's the reason why we need to tell it what type of processing that we want to, uh, what type of uh, data type that we're trying to process. And in this case, we have, we're using floats. And in here, we see our alternative constructor here. Uh, and we see that 
it creates an oscillator with a periodic input function between negative pi and pi. And if the lookup table is not zero, then the function will be approximated with the lookup table. So, uh, so that's the optional argument here that we have. And if we go down, we see that this uh, constructor calls an initialized function. And then in here, we have this uh, table that could be, uh, that will be calculated uh, that will actually approximate the, um, where your wave needs to be at a particular time as it processes through your uh, audio callback. Okay, so that's that. And just, just to give you a general, a very high level overview of what's happening there. So let's go ahead and just declare this oscillator. So we could say juice, and then it's in the DSP namespace, and then it's oscillator. Once again, we need to declare what type of, where of, uh, of data type we're processing, which is float. I will just call this OSC and we will, oh, not sure what that happened there. And then uh, what we will do is we will create this, uh, create our constructor here. So we will declare that in line. And once again, we need to use a Lambda. So open and close square braces. And then we will have this float X, which will be our input and then what we will do is we will return, and in this case, we're going to start off using a sine wave. So we could use the standard function uh, std sine. We're just going to do std sine of x. And I think all of my um, all of my braces are in the right place. So hopefully this works. And so we're fine there, and we have built successfully. Okay, so by the way, I'm going to put all of this on our GitHub afterwards as well. So you can actually just download this or clone the repo and uh, actually check this out if you're having trouble getting this to build. So moving on to our plugin processor.cpp. Uh, as you may know from our past DSP tutorials, normally in any DSP algorithm, there will be some type of prepare method where we need to be able to give our DSP algorithm the sample size, buffer size, and number of channels that we're trying to process. Okay, so this is important, especially if we're using the Juice DSP class. But normally, even if you're not using a the Juice DSP module, then uh, there will still normally be some type of prepare method that you, where you need to pass in at least the sample rate. Okay, so first thing that we need to do is going back to our documentation is we have this thing called process spec. So I've gone over this before, but just to review, this process spec is the way that we can actually pass this information neatly into our oscillator. So we can just create one of these in line. So juice, DSP, process spec, spec like that. And then we can just declare all of these uh, things. So we got spec maximum block size equals samples per block. So that's how big our buffer size is. Then we have spec dot sample rate equals sample rate. Spec dot num channels equals, and then you have this get total num output channels. And now I can just pass that into my oscillator by doing OSC prepare. And then you see it just wants you to pass a reference to the spec object. And that's how I could do that. Okay, so that's all good to go. Now we can move on to our process block where we actually do our processing here. So I'm just going to get rid of all of this uh, boilerplate commentary. And I can actually get rid of this as well. And so what we need to do, uh, as you may remember, if you've seen any of the other DSP tutorials, is that uh, we have this audio buffer, which is our, our audio buffer here. Um, and then what we need to do for any Juice DSP module um, methods is that we need to pass it a audio block, which is uh, an alias for, it's essentially the same thing as the audio buffer, but it's uh, what we would call an alias. So uh, we can just create one of those here by saying Juice 
uh, DSP, once again, because it's in the DSP module, audio block, and this is, once again, type float. Make sure all of these are the same and you're not mixing and matching data types. And I will just call this audio block. And if we go into our audio block documentation, so here we are, scrolling all the way back up. Uh, we can construct an audio block in a number of different ways. Uh, the one that we're using is this particular one where we're using constructing an audio block with our audio buffer. And we can see here from the documentation that it says uh, down here, audio block does not copy nor own the memory pointed to by data to use. Uh, so, so that just means that it's not creating new data. It's just an alias. It's, it's just pointing towards our buffer. So we can put our buffer in there as an argument. And then what we can do is we can now process the oscillator through our buffer. So osc.process. And now it expects this process context. So just to review quickly, process context replacing. Uh, so you can do two types of processing, uh, either replacing or context non-replacing. So process context replacing means that when we pass our buffer or our audio block into this, uh, into this process method, the outcome is going to, if we do replacing that uh, the result of whatever happens in that process method is going to replace whatever was in the uh, was in the audio buffer before. Whereas you have context non-replacing, which is not going to replace that contents. Okay, so that's that's what that's all about. So now we just need to create a process context replacing object, and we can do that in line just by uh, throwing in our audio block. In, into this uh, into this object. So once again, it's juice DSP process context replacing. Once again, make sure all of your data types are the same. They're all floats in this case. And then in here, I can say I can just put in my audio block. Okay. So this is this is ready. This will actually work. But before we do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually create a gain so we can actually just adjust this, make sure it's not so loud in your headphones. Okay. So we have this juice DSP gain. Once again, same sort of same type of uh, same type of thing. Okay. Uh, so we could just say juice DSP gain. Once again, we've got to make it float. And I will just call this gain. And that's it. Since it's part of our DSP, uh, since it's part of the DSP module, we've got to do gain dot. Uh, oh, oh, sorry, I need to go back up here to prepare to play. And we need to do gain dot prepare, where we pass it the um, where we pass it our process spec. And then another thing while I'm here is we need to set a uh, a frequency for our oscillator. So I could say set, I could use the method called set frequency. And then in here, I'll put 220. And I know that I'm going through this a bit quick. Um, the reason is because if I, if I go back and forth, it'll make the tutorial a lot slower. So uh, please feel free to watch through this multiple times if you need to. Okay, so now we're down here and now we want to process our uh, our gain. So we could just actually, I think I could do just in the prepare to play, I could say gain set gain linear. So I'll just use this for now. And I will just make this 0 0.01. Okay. Make sure that you don't do uh, that you don't mix up set gain linear and set gain decibels and get those mixed up and put in the wrong numbers because that will be very painful. Okay, so make sure gain linear is between zero and one. Okay, and now we will just do gain dot process. 
and we just put uh, once again we just uh, create another juice DSP process context replacing let's type float and audio block again okay so uh, so some people may be saying wow why are you putting audio block through there again remember this is process context replacing so what happens is OSC process runs and then audio block once once this is finished running this method audio block is going to contain our sine wave information and then we have then we run gain dot process which is going to take all of those values and it's going to turn it down uh, so we don't blow out our eardrums okay so let's go ahead and just build this really quick and see if this works and you should hear a sine wave there Okay, so uh, I kept it very soft just in case you had your headphones quite loud. So there you go. Uh, one thing, if you're building in standalone mode and you're not hearing anything, make sure you go into your options, audio and MIDI settings, and make sure that your output is actually set to your speakers that you're listening on your headphones or wherever you're listening through. Okay, so, so that works great. So that's a sine wave. And now we've built an oscillator. So this is cool. Uh, one thing that we can do as well is we could try some different waves in here. So I will just take this, I will duplicate this very quickly. And, and down the road in uh, very soon, in our subsequent tutorials, we'll organize this a lot better where we can actually switch between the different uh, equations. So we have, let's make a saw wave. So I have this uh, equation that I actually got from so this is courtesy of the juice team in there. Uh, I think they have an oscillator uh, tutorial where they actually show uh, where they actually give a use for for the juice DSP oscillator class. And let's see, what have I? Oh, this has to be. You have to declare this as juice. So there we go. So this is now a saw wave. Okay, and let me put these down here just in case you clone the repo. Uh, and you're not sure where these are coming from. So we'll go like this. So this is a sine wave. And then here's a saw wave. And a square wave. Okay just in case you want to experiment around. And I highly encourage experimentation. So um, yeah, please feel free to, to experiment around. So this should, this should sound like a saw wave now. Cool, we have a saw wave. That sounds great. And let's try a square wave now. So let's just replace this really quick. And this should be a square wave. <clears throat> there we are and that is really how it works now if we wanted to add uh, if we wanted to add a, a lookup table to make this more efficient uh, maybe a good arbitrary number might be I don't know 200 points for our lookup table and you won't hear any difference really in the sound but it will be efficient it, it will be uh, more efficient when you're when you're changing the frequency Okay, remember that our changing, we're just changing the frequency in uh, our prepare to play at the moment. That's where we're setting the frequency. So if you're looking for a cool exercise uh, to do to extend off of this, maybe think about uh, setting, uh, getting sliders uh, for your oscillator frequency and for your gain and, uh, and connecting those up so you can actually change your gain and your frequency. So that's that's it for this tutorial. And uh, yeah, that's that's how we create a basic oscillator. And we're going to use this and build upon this to actually start building a synthesizer. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I will see you next time. Be sure to like and subscribe if you found this helpful and I'll see you soon.